On Saturday the 16th of January 2021, I decided I was going to play Game Boy and only Game Boy for 30 days straight. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but I wasn't quite prepared for what would happen. Towards the end of 2020, I found myself in the possession of some of my favourite gaming consoles I've ever owned. I was lucky enough to pick up a PlayStation 5 on launch day and I've been having some insane amounts of fun playing it with my son. I also got an RG351M, which is the best handheld emulator I've ever used. So why, with all these awesome new toys, would I decide to give them up for 30 days and play just Game Boy? Specifically, an unmodded original DMG01 Game Boy. Well, there's a few reasons actually. The first of which goes back over 30 years. As a young lad, the console I literally dreamt about owning was the Game Boy. I remember seeing the adverts and wishing that one day I would own one. So the moment when my grandparents bought me one in the summer of 1990 is one of my most cherished childhood memories. And the Game Boy is my most played console as a kid. Fast forward to the current day and having recently had our third kid, I'm finding less and less time available to sit down and play games. So one of my favourite ways to play games is using handheld devices. Throw into the mix that I saw an episode from Super Sambams where he did a 30 day Game Boy challenge. After watching a similar Forge Labs episode, a 30 day Game Boy challenge sounded like a really fun idea. So early on a Saturday morning in 2021, I put down the PS5 controller and moved aside my RG351M for my Game Boy. Now it was important for me to go back to my roots, that's why I chose the DMG01 Game Boy, and not anything more convenient like a Game Boy Color. I figured it would make it more interesting to see how I handled this brick for 30 days. It was also important that I do the challenge with no mods. Good old batteries and a lamp for light would have to do for me, but we'll get more into that later. I grabbed my DMG01, four Duracell batteries and my box of Game Boy games. I wanted to make sure I played through a decent amount of games, so I decided to select a bunch of games I would focus on over the 30 days. First to not make the list were Super Mario Land 2 and Donkey Kong. They're two of the best games on the console, however I completed those when I was younger, so there wasn't much left for me to do with those. Two games I definitely wanted to focus on were Pokemon Gold and Link's Awakening. I'm still partway through Link's Awakening, having started it over a year ago. I started playing it as I haven't completed a Zelda game before. So I decided the first game I was going to play in this challenge was Zelda Link's Awakening. The other games in my selection were Donkey Kong Land 3, WWF Superstars, Super Mario Land, The Amazing Spider-Man, NFL Blitz, Mario Golf, Looney Tunes Twubble, Mole Mania, Mortal Kombat 2, NBA All-Star Challenge 2 and Wave Race. Whilst grabbing my Game Boy for the first time and selecting the games I was going to play, my son actually decided to put on the PlayStation 5 and start playing Astro's Playroom. So the first time I actually sat down to play some Zelda was with the big temptation of the PlayStation 5 being played right in front of me. Surprisingly though, and pretty quickly, I drowned out the sounds of Astro and was sucked into the pea green screen of the Game Boy. The only real distraction was my son asking for help on Astro. But when normally I would grab the controller and show him how it's done, I just told him he could do it and he did. That's actually a pretty good parenting lesson for me to hold on to. Anyway, I carried on playing as my other son watched me play and struggle for light. He also enjoyed having a little go to himself. The rest of the day continued and I found myself with multiple opportunities to grab my Game Boy and have a quick blast. I noticed a few things straight away. First of all, you get used to no backlight pretty quickly, and there are plenty of situations where it's really comfortable to see the screen. Secondly, the Game Boy loads up so blisteringly fast with almost no load screens. It's perfect for pick up and play. Finally though, Link's Awakening is damn tricky, and I wasn't going to get very far into playing any of those other games unless I used a walkthrough. As the night closed up on the first day, I decided I wanted to make a journal of these 30 days so that I could remember everything I'd experienced. My sister had bought me this amazing notepad a few Christmases ago that was designed to look like a Game Boy. It even has this lenticular screen which has Mario on it. It's such a nice notepad that I never really wanted to use it, but this seemed like the perfect time to use it. 
like it was made for this story. After a couple of days of playing Link's Awakening, with a lot of it to still play through and being stuck trying to find Marin, even though I had the walkthrough, I decided I was going to try out some of the other games over the next few days and go back to Zelda later. Now I'd like to take a moment here and state how superb Zelda Link's Awakening really is. I'd heard so much about this game, but when I started playing it last year, I hadn't really appreciated just how good it was. However, after playing so many Game Boy games back to back and realising how simple so many of them really were, it made me realise what an in-depth, rich and complex game Link's Awakening was at the time, and even is to this day. Playing through it, I have a huge amount of respect for the kids back then that played through this and discovered all the secrets. Secrets that sometimes gave no clue as to where they were or how to access them. Honestly, without a walkthrough, I would have struggled. And there were many times I thought, how on earth would you discover these things? I guess I have a lot less time to explore these days, so my patience is less. I do kind of wish though that I'd explored this wonderful environment of Link's back when I was a kid and had all the time in the world. On the third day, I didn't get a chance to play any Game Boy, as I had a lot of work to get through as well as helping my son with schoolwork. But I couldn't stop thinking about playing Game Boy. I started thinking about games I always wanted as a kid. Games like Mortal Kombat 1. Games I didn't even know existed when I was younger and wished they had, like Street Fighter 2. And games I wish I'd never given away. Like Pit Fighter. Pit Fighter is a game that always makes me think of my dad. It reminds me of how he used to drive me to the local cinema just so I could play on the Street Fighter 2 arcade because I didn't have a console at home that could play it. Also, it wasn't available for the Game Boy at the time. I wanted to have something, anything like Street Fighter 2 to play at home. So on the way back one day, my dad stopped at Toys R Us and he bought me the closest thing that we could find to Street Fighter, Pit Fighter on the Game Boy. It was fun, but it was definitely no Street Fighter 2 replacement. But I still love that my dad got me it. A few years later, I ended up swapping it for a copy of NASCAR, a game that I really do like, but I wish I hadn't because I wish I still had that copy of Pit Fighter. I didn't really appreciate it at the time, and thinking of it brings back those great memories with my dad and him taking me to play the Street Fighter 2 arcade, a man who otherwise is not really into video games. Day 4, and I was logged back into work. Thankfully though, Game Boy is great for those dull meetings. I decided to play some Spider-Man. If Pit Fighter is the game that makes me think of my dad, Spider-Man is the game that makes me think of my mom. She helped me to pick it on one of those rare occasions when I had enough money to buy a new Game Boy game. Once again though, I don't own my original copy of Spider-Man. The story with that one is that I lent the game to a friend who then dropped his Game Boy in the sea with Spider-Man in it. His Game Boy survived, but my Spider-Man game didn't. When I think about it now, what the heck was he actually doing playing Game Boy in the sea? But anyway, back to Spider-Man the game. It's actually a lot easier than I remember it being, and the music is so good. However, I still could not complete it though. The next game I played was Mortal Kombat 2. The music in that is so good too. I remember getting this as a kid. Whilst nowhere near the arcade game, I was absolutely psyched to be able to play a Sub-Zero on my Game Boy. I also remember trying to access the secret smoke level. There was this guy that would always pop up in the corner randomly and you had to press select and B I think. I only ever managed to do it once as a kid and I still can't do it to this day. That guy is just too damn fast for me. Day 5 was a bit of a tough one. I started to get sick of playing Game Boy. It wasn't helped by the fact that I hooked up a PlayStation 2 in my son's room and he started playing Burnout. I was so tempted to play, especially considering I like to experience every new game and experience that my son has together with him. Instead I played some more Mortal Kombat 2. But I think I'm kind of over fighting games. I still love it, but I was just losing interest. Having said that, the next day I decided to switch things up a little bit and play WWF Superstars. Now I really enjoyed this. Again, the music is great. We're starting to see a bit of a theme here. But I also really like the graphics. There are some really nice details to this game. My son came over to see what I was playing. He said, that's crazy. It looks like nothing, it's just a green place with some people. Well, to me it looks great anyway. Realising I was going to be swapping through games quite regularly, I needed to find a way to carry my games around, so I found a little drawstring bag and that did the job perfectly. 
I can't actually remember now though how I used to carry games around as a kid. I might have just focused more on a couple of games at a time, I'm not sure really. I did start to find that my attention span for these games was pretty short. I don't know if it's because I was trying to get through as many as possible or if it's the games themselves. Nevertheless, the next game I played was NFL Blitz. At first, this seemed like a hot pile of garbage and nothing like the NFL Blitz game I love on the PlayStation 1. There's no music, absolutely terrible sound effects and there's some really weird graphical issues going on. But after a couple of goes, I actually started to enjoy it. I guess the strategy of American football is enough to make this game fun. Next up was some Super Mario Land. Now man was that a nostalgia rush. Great music, controls, level design and gameplay. I put quite a bit of time into Super Mario over the next few days and at one point I was doing brilliantly with 11 lives and on World 3. At which point I lost all my lives making stupid mistakes in a matter of minutes. The nerves just got to me. But it's exactly that kind of game. Next on the list was NBA All-Stars 2. This was a game I played loads as a kid and it holds up pretty well. I got really nostalgic playing this and seeing all the classic NBA stars. Me and my mates back in Greece used to really be into the NBA in our teens, so it was really nice to relive some of those memories. After NBA All-Stars, I tried a totally new game, Looney Tunes Twubble. Now that is a weird game. I thought it might be good as I really like the Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle game. However, it started off as this like crappy platformer, then it kind of turns into an isometric exploration game. I didn't play that for too long and I don't think I'll be going back to that. I also noticed around about this time that every single car I used needed me to blow on it to work properly. It's not a myth, people. Now I know blowing on the carts isn't the best thing for them, but I did it as a kid, so I'm doing it now. But at this point, I was also starting to crave something a little bit different. I was starting to crave something with a bit more quality. Now, Mole Madness is a game I heard about through a recommendation from the MJR crew. I've had it for a couple of years, but I've never played it. It's the lesser known game by Mario and Zelda creator Miyamoto. And what a charming game it is. It's a tricky puzzle game, but so well designed. It reminds me a little bit of Quirk. The thing I really like about this is it's a pure pick up and go game. And you can also tell that is a game that was created later in the Game Boy life cycle, as it is designed with a lot of quality of life improvements like autosave for example. I really like Mole Mania, and I ended up putting quite a lot of time into it. As I approached day 10, I started to realize I was distracted from all these other games. I really wanted to play Pokemon. I couldn't resist the urge anymore, so I decided to pop in Pokemon Gold. At which point I realized the save battery was dead. Now, unlike in the Forge Labs videos, I didn't want to turn to an emulator as it feels a little bit like cheating. At the end of the day, I want the full Game Boy experience like I had as a kid. So I had two options, replace the battery or buy a repro cart. With both options coming in at the same cost, I decided to order a new battery and a repro cart and go with whichever option came first. As I waited to play Pokemon, I played some more Mole Madness, beating the first boss. But it was at this point I couldn't handle not being able to play in the dark anymore. So I reached for my light boy. This thing is such a beast and I remember how blown away I was when my mum got me at one Christmas years ago. I didn't know anything like it existed and I used it pretty much all of the time. It still works every bit as good now as it did back then. The next game I got around to playing while I waited for Pokemon was Donkey Kong Land 3. And I had really good fun with this. The music is great and the controls are really fluid. Although I'd argue that the graphics are a bit too ambitious and complex for the small Game Boy screen. I had a lot of fun with this, but I didn't put a lot of time into it. After having played through most games on my list, I decided to start focusing on a select few games that I was really enjoying. As I still waited for my Pokemon Gold solution to arrive, I started to think I might not even bother with Pokemon Gold. I might play Yellow instead. I've completed Red in the past, but never Yellow. Also, I have Soul Silver on the DS, so I might save my Gen 2 experience for when I can play the DS. Saying that, I'm really starting to crave playing other consoles right now, like the DS. Just as I decided to play Pokemon Yellow instead, that same day, the Pokemon Gold Repro and Battery arrived at the same time. I decided to go ahead and replace the battery, which turned out to be really easy. With a work in Pokemon Gold Original and Repro cart, I went on to play Pokemon Yellow. The thing I really love about Pokemon Yellow, and all Pokemon games on the Game Boy actually, is the fact that it's so easy to play one-handed. 
which is perfect for multitask gaming. You know, like when you're trying to eat and stuff. I started playing the most Game Boy I had over the next few days by playing Pokemon like this. Once I hit the midway point at around about day 15, I started to find it really easy to not want to play modern games. I also found a new appreciation for Game Boy games in general, and just how much fun they still are. Pokemon and Link's Awakening are easily the top two though. Over the next few days, and really up until the 30 day mark, I swapped between Link's Awakening and Pokemon Yellow, and I've loved every single second of playing them. I've also realised how easy new Pokemon games are. They should really add a harder difficulty level in the new games that takes away a lot of the hand-holding that's been introduced over the years, because it was the challenge that made Pokemon so great. Talking about new games, I've actually also found a new appreciation for modern games as well, and how far they've really come. It really started to make me think that I think I've been taking them for granted. As I entered the final week, I really didn't want the challenge to be over, I was just having too much fun. I also decided as well that as I'd gotten so used to a non-backlit screen, it wasn't really providing a challenge to me anymore. And as I was so close to the end anyway, I decided I was going to install the backlight mod that I've had sitting around the game room for months. That proved to be trickier than I expected, and I actually thought I might end up breaking my Game Boy literally days before the end of the challenge. It took me a few hours to install, and in the end looking back it wasn't really that hard. I guess I was just a little bit scared whilst doing it. But whilst doing that, I also took the opportunity to fix some of the deadlines that had started to appear on the screen. That's actually a really easy fix if you use your soldering iron, and it's something I'm really glad I did. The end result though with that backlight screen is absolutely stunning. Even though I was fine with a non-backlit screen, this upgrade just takes the console to a whole nother level, and I recommend it to anybody who has an original Game Boy. It was a really nice way to enter the last week. The last week which might actually have been the most eventful and challenging. On day 26 I had to go for my Covid vaccine. Now I'm no stranger to flu vaccines so wasn't really phased. As I entered the sports hall all of a sudden everything felt a lot more daunting than I expected. Rows of people sat in a barren open sports hall waiting to be vaccinated. It looked like something you'd expect to see during wartime. I've always taken the Covid pandemic very seriously but seeing this really cemented the scale of it all. I'm not gonna lie, I got pretty anxious. As I waited, I whipped out my Game Boy and got lost in a world of Pokemon and everything relaxed. As I played one of the staff said, Wow, I've not seen one of those in years. That really takes me back. Then she started reminiscing about playing Tetris. That was really cool. On day 27, the rest of the Retro Refresh crew had started playing on Anstream, a cloud-based retro gaming service. The cool thing is, it's really social based, in that you can challenge each other. Sega Head, Jamie from the Button Bashers, Retro Gamer Boy and Telesplash Gaming all kept on talking about these challenges and how they were taking part in them and I really really wanted to join in the fun but I was only a few days away from the finish line. I couldn't give up now. On day 28, my son who actually hadn't played that much on the PlayStation 5 over the past month or any other console really, started playing Ratchet and Clank, a game I've wanted to get round to for ages and it looked so good. But again, I couldn't give up, I was so close. Although I was not going to finish them, I focused on Zelda and Pokemon for the next few days. Day 30, I made it. It's amazing how quickly it's passed to be honest. I'm not even sure if I'm ready to put down the Game Boy yet. One thing that really has amazed me is how I haven't had to change the batteries once, even with the backlight mod added. And I've put in some serious time as well. As day 30 came to a close, I reminisced over the past month. It has been really nice to get some quality time in with my Game Boy. A console that has meant so much to me ever since my grandparents surprised me with it that summer night over 30 years ago. I still love collecting games for it, but like with Mole Mania, I never really sat down to play with them. One of the big things that put me off was no backlight, but that really turned out to not be an issue. Maybe the fact that I was in lockdown made it easier as I was mostly at home with decent lighting, but nevertheless I got used to the screen in a matter of hours. Fixing the Pokemon Gold Cart as well as installing the backlight mod was great fun too, and really gave me the confidence to do more stuff like that in the future. I'm actually thinking of modding my son's Game Boy Pocket next. I've also started to look at modern games differently too. As we progress through the generations it's easy to forget just how far we've come. Even if you do play retro games like I regularly do, you don't really realise unless you go cold turkey. One thing is for sure, when I finally got round to playing Ratchet & Clank, I absolutely loved it. 
more than I have any other modern game in a long time. Sure, it's a great game, but I have no doubt it's due to me approaching it from a totally different perspective. The modern graphics are just so gorgeous too. And graphics are usually my least important aspect of a video game. But after staring at a Game Boy screen for 30 days, you see modern graphics in a completely new light. So what happened next? Was that it for playing Game Boy for another 30 years? Heck no, I've still got Pokemon Yellow and Link's Awakening to complete, but I am enjoying getting back to my game in freedom. Now I really, really enjoyed this challenge over the last 30 days, way more than I ever expected. It's really made me approach video games from a completely different perspective and found an even greater and deeper love for them. Whilst I won't be jumping into any challenges like that immediately, because there's a lot of PlayStation 5 games coming out this year that I'm really looking forward to, this is definitely something I think I'll be doing again. I just have to think about which console I'm going to focus on. I hope you've enjoyed this story and sharing my journey with me, and I hope you join me for the next one too. If you want to show your support for Chronic Spartan games, then you can head on over to chronicspartan.com and check out our indie games. You can become a Chronic Spartan patron at patreon.com, or you can kick off your shoes and relax your socks with some Chronic Spartan merch from tpublic.com. All links are in the description below. But the simplest and easiest way to show your support is to just hit that subscribe button. Thank you for tuning in.